innovative, dynamic, gritty, determined, warrior. This podcast is about the innovators, the leaders on the front lines of adversity, the all around good people doing good deeds. They are the civic warriors of the world. Our guests are the leaders in the nonprofit industry affecting change. They try, they fail, they overcome. Through their stories, we can join forces to become civic warriors. Welcome, everybody that's out there. Uh, Heather Campisi, Brad Caruso. In, in our profession, we meet a lot of individuals. We work with a lot of organizations. And everybody does something unique. But, but at the end of the day, the, you know, every, every organization has its purpose, has its mission, and goes about fulfilling that mission in different ways. So with us today is Christopher Perry. Chris is the executive director of Spectrum for Living. And Chris and I have worked together for uh, about a year now, talking about, you know, working through through the audit, but but uh, bigger picture, working through some, some other things at the organization, like organizational change. Um, all organizations now are going through change, are going through times where um, you can't always do it, you can't keep doing what you always did. And so I think that's an important point that we all try to figure out. So, you know, I guess to start, Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about Spectrum, just to, to give frame a reference. Sure. Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me uh, be a part of this podcast. Uh, Spectrum for Living is an organization that serves over 1,000 adults with disabilities here in the state of New Jersey. We have a vast uh, footprint of uh, 28 different facilities uh, some of which are residential, some of which are adult uh, day programs. And really, our ultimate objective is to afford adults with disabilities uh, the best opportunity for them to reach their fullest uh, potential and, and for them to have a rich recreational life and to have all of the things that we would normally want for a family member of ours. So that's really a spectrum in a nutshell. Uh, the organization has been around for 35 years, as you alluded to with some other organizations you've worked with. Uh, it was an organization that had been doing the same thing for those 35 years, you know, transacting business the same way without changing. And so um, I uh, started with Spectrum February, February of 2018 as our president and CEO. And I've uh, I've certainly enjoyed my time with the organization thus far. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah, and, and you know I think some of the, the key highlights there is just uh, you know you mentioned creating a family for mm -hmm. both your your clients and, and in order to create a family, you know what's what's the link that does that? Right. You know from our perspective, it's your employees. It's, yes, it's, that's correct. And and it's the tone mm -hmm. from the top, and it's mm -hmm. it's how the the organizational uh, message carries down to those employees. Um, you know, in, in the not-for-profit world, the majority of community-based organizations are funded by payroll uh, or, or their main expenditures are payroll. You know, mm -hmm. usually what we see is about 60, 70 percent of uh, organizations' dollars are spent towards payroll. And so if you think about that, in order to have a lasting impact on an organization, you have to keep your employees happy. You have to keep employees for a long period of time. And how do you do that, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what, that's what I struggle with because, you know, we're accountants and sometimes we can't answer that question. But that's why we have intelligent, like-minded individuals like Chris here who can help us with that. Right. Um, so, you know, I think that's great. And, and so in order to have that lasting impact, you know, you want to retain your employees and you want to find a way to, um, you know, make them happy so they can make your clients happy. Yes. You know, if you're serving over a thousand, a thousand individuals with um, developmental disabilities, you know, that, that can be taxing. That, can, that takes a toll on employees. It takes a toll um, over time. And so you have to find ways to keep everybody happy so that you can continue to carry out your mission. Yes. Um, so the one thing that we've talked about and the one thing that sparked my interest significantly, um, you know, and you were super excited about it, which is the one, you know, I love when people are excited about something because it means it's going to get done well. Mm -hmm. If you're excited, you have to be excited to do something well, mm -hmm. um, was your, uh, employee recognition program. Yes. So why don't you talk a little bit about, about why? You know, what made you think about it and, and what made you decide we want to we want to go through with this and, and tell us a little bit about it? Sure. Uh, so when I first started with the organization, I uh, conducted town hall meetings with mm -hmm. our staff at varying levels uh, of the organization uh, at all. Twenty nine. We had twenty nine facilities back then 
at all 29 of our locations. And a common theme that I, that I heard about was, you know, we have a very high turnover of our direct care staff, uh, the staff that directly serve our adult clients. And also, in addition to that uh, high turnover, we had low morale. Mm -hmm. And so those are two pernicious issues that plague uh, many agencies that are operating in this space. But my challenge, the challenge put before me was, well, what are you going to do about it? And so um, there were some other issues, you know, related to compensation, which I'm not going to necessarily touch on in, in my dialogue with you all, but that somewhat affects that turnover and that morale issue. But within the scope of power that I had to, uh, to manage this particular challenge, um, in response to that challenge, I created a program called the Alex Awards. And the Alex Awards was named after one of our founding parents, Alexander Gallion, mm -hmm. whose son was a, a client of ours for many years prior to his uh, death many years ago. And um, the Alex Awards is really designed to try to change the internal psychology of our workforce at Spectrum. Um, one of the issues that our direct care employees face is dealing with difficult families of the clients that we serve. Families are dealing with their loved one having a disability. Uh, many of our, our, our clients have had this dis these disabilities since they were born. So the families have been dealing with this, this, this loved one of theirs with this significant disability since the birth of this sure. particular individual. And that carries with it a certain psychology in and of itself. And so we take these clients in, and then we're not just serving the client. We're also serving the family. You're creating a family of that environment. Client. Right. Yep. And we very much rely on that a positive interaction with our families in order to best serve the interest of that client. But as I alluded to, uh, certain families, many of them can be very demanding and can say things to our direct care staff that are demoralizing. And so the Alex Awards program is not just, we're not just giving money to people. It's right. deeper than that. So the, the function of this program is to allow uh, Spectrum for Living families of clients, uh, to allow Spectrum for Living clients themselves, particularly our higher performing clients that are not as significantly disabled as some of our other clients, and also to allow uh, Spectrum for Living employees to once a month nominate a Spectrum employee to receive an Alex Award. We created an internet portal on our website with, that's easily managed with a, it's through Google Forms. And basically any one of the three different types of people that I just mentioned can go in once a month and nominate an, a Spectrum for Living employee to receive an Alex Award. And so how the program works from that point on is we review these submissions on a monthly basis and we, uh, the executive office, my office, determines who, who is going to receive an Alex Award. And um, so the first, there are four different levels of an mm -hmm. Alex Award. You can receive a bronze award, a silver award, a gold award, or a platinum award. The first award that an employee can receive is a bronze award, and that comes with a $25 monetary incentive, as well as a certificate, uh, a recognition certificate. Uh, the second level, of course, is the Silver Award. That comes with a $50 incentive. Uh, the next level that they can receive is a Gold Award. That comes with a $75 incentive. And then the last award they can receive is a Platinum Award. And that comes with a $100 trip incentive. To no. Right. <laughs> Free trip to Disney. Everybody's We're dreaming. working on that for next year. Okay, We're next year. Yeah, yeah, right. Soon. But for now, it's a $100 incentive with that Platinum Award. Nice. And, uh, and yeah, and so... You know, so how it works, you know, so we select these award winners uh, every month. Yep. Uh, an agency-wide e-blast is sent out announcing the winners. It also contains uh, not just the list of names of the winners, but also it includes pictures. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I go out as president and CEO, and I personally hand-deliver these awards, uh, which, which in and of itself, you know, I'm I'm kind of I'm really just a guy with a job, a, a pretty of important course, yeah, job. Pretty important job. But uh, <laughs> people people tend to look up to the president and CEO, sure. and they like seeing their president and CEO in action, visiting the facilities. I I visit our facilities regularly 
But in addition to that, I like like to be the the chief ambassador spreading goodwill within the agency. And so that's another function of this as well. And so... Change uh, your title? What is it? (laughs) Yes. C-E-S-B-O. Right. So I will say it's it's certainly been well-received. You know, we've been doing this for about seven months now. It's been extremely well-received. And we are now at a point where we've we've had uh, repeat nominations for cer- sure. certain employees. So we are giving awards at those higher levels, the the silvers, the the golds, and the platinums now. So, now, uh, now, do you feel mm-hmm. that um, you know? I, I know one of the one of the facets of this is that employee recognizes employee. Yes, you felt that was a very important factor in making this work well. Extremely, yeah, extremely because. We wanted to encourage our employees to realize that they themselves yeah. can be goodwill ambassadors. Right. Um, and so by thinking of their coworker in a positive way, and not just nominating your buddy that you may be close with at work, right. <laughs> but actually nominating them for something that they did that's above and beyond what their normal job description says they should be doing, that's what we're really trying to identify. And it, and it also has the tangential effect of encouraging people to go above and beyond. Some right. people are motivated by the recognition. Some people are, uh, you know, they're motivated by the monetary incentive that comes with the award. Yeah, some are, you know, motivated by both. But some are just really people that are out there just going above and beyond. And some people are so humble, they're like, you know what, I don't really want the award. Can you give it to somebody else? And th- those are truly exceptional people oh, within yeah. our agency yeah. that, that have that response to receiving an award. And some people will turn around with the monetary incentive they receive, and they'll treat their coworkers to pizza, you know, with oh, the cool. money. Yeah, so it's really just creating, it's changing this the internal psychology at Spectrum. Yeah, it's, it's, mm-hmm. just, it's creating that, that collaborative culture, which... In my experience, that that is what makes a non for profit run. You know, mo- yes. most most individuals don't don't join or work for a non profit because because they want the biggest paycheck of you know that they've ever had in their career. Most people do it because they care about the mission, mm-hmm. um, they care about the work, or they like doing that type of work. So that's true. I think that's, that's true. you know no question that's that's uh, super important. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and the point that resonated with me just just the fact that that you're the ambassador of this I think mm-hmm. is what's making it work. Um, you know, our CEO, I grew up in our, in our company and public accounting is just a tough profession in general mm-hmm. because um, sometimes it's hard to keep people. Sometimes people use it as a stepping stone to their next career. Mm-hmm. And, and people always ask, you know, what makes you stay in public accounting? Because it's a little wacky. You know, you work crazy hours, you do weird things, mm-hmm. whatever that means. And, uh, you know, the thing that always made me stay was my boss. You know, our CEO now, Bill Hageman, still walks around and says hello to everyone, still knows everybody's name. And when I grew up as an, you know, an intern sitting outside his office, every morning would say hello. It was just you never felt like he was the CEO. You just felt like he was working alongside you, even yes. though he was the most he, he was the guy with the most power and yes. you would never know it. Mm-hmm. So I think I think that's, uh, you know, that's a key <laughs> aspect to it. Um, so tell me, um, generationally, mm-hmm. how is this program being received? Because you see the <clears throat> shift within the industry of a lot of a lot more people want this work life balance. And you see that more with the younger generations, millennials. Mm-hmm. How is this across the board? resonating with those who work here? I would say it's been uh, well-received across all generations. Uh, you know, we have younger employees. We have, uh, uh, you know, employees re- approaching a retirement age as well. I'd say it's been very well-received. And, uh, and you know, we have uh, people across generations nominating people to get awards as well, which to me is another indication of the, the buy-in uh, for this program, internal sure. to spectrum. Mm-hmm. Do you see? Because um, this is this is published internally. Is there any external aspect to this right now? So as far as because you, know, you know you mentioned one of the challenges is is kind of creating the collaboration not just with you and the employees but you the employees and the families yes. of the the clients that you serve. Yes. You know, do they see this too? And, and yes, has there been do. any feedback? Yes, the families are also active participants in this program. Mm-hmm. We get about one quarter of the submissions every month are from family members of Spectrum oh, wow. clients, about so, one quarter, yes. So, And that number, I think, is increasing the more that they come to know about the program. Uh, we hold family meetings about twice a year with, you know, across all tw- now 28 of our facilities uh, to meet with the families of our clients. And uh, at the family meetings we did last fall, we actually rolled out the Alex Awards and shared it with them. And so we had... In month one of this program, we had family members buying in, nominating Spectrum employees 
uh, getting to, and it also is encouraging. The funny thing is many family members, they'll come and visit their loved one, but they don't take the time to get to know the staff member that they may see repeatedly upon Who's visiting. For their loved yeah, right, right, right. yeah, yeah. So it, it encouraged them to have a dialogue with them and say, hey, what's your name? Like, get to know them more. Sure. And so it's it's just had such positive tangential some some effects I'd say that necessar- weren't necessarily contemplated but are now certainly well received outcomes of the, of having implemented this program. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting to hear. You know, I always I always think about you know when I think about employee benefit programs, I mean, most people's head goes straight to monetary. Right. You know, I think whenever I talk with folks, it's, you know, we have to save money on health insurance or we have to offer better benefits or we have, you know, I think most most individuals or people in your role, I think don't always don't always consider that sometimes you can implement something that doesn't cost a lot, right. doesn't cost a lot probably for you to, you know, how much, I guess, just a general question. I mean, did it cost a lot for you to implement this other than your time? No, not really. I mean, it's so our budget, you know, we have about 650 employees across mm-hmm. our agency. Yep. Our budget is to give out $1,000 per month in Alex Awards. And uh, that's just in year one. We are contemplating increasing the amount uh, next year sure. in order to increase the number of awards that we're able to give out. Um, but, yeah, so it's, it's, not, it's not particularly high cost. But we had, you know, in my estimation, we had to do something more, more immediate and more impactful mm-hmm. to address some of the issues that I discerned when I first started. Sure. You know, we we offer a rich benefit program um, in terms of our health insurance, in terms of our 403B plan, but not everybody partakes in that. Um, you know, some people have uh, health insurance benefits uh, through a spouse's employer, mm-hmm. so they may not be in our health insurance plan, or they may not be particularly interested in investing in our 403B plan for sure. their own retirement. Sure. Um, but we And then we also have a referral bonus uh, program as well. Uh, so, and that works by, you know, it's, it's a thousand dollars. If somebody refers another person to come at work at Spectrum and that person comes and they make it through six months of employment, then the employee who referred them will get $500. Oh, wow. And if they make it through a year, then the employee who referred them will get another $500. Okay, cool. But this Alex Awards program was really designed to, uh, to, to kind of address some of the other issues that we had in terms of employee employee relations as well as family employee relations, and uh, and that's what so that's ostensibly why this was uh, put into effect. Yeah, so uh, mm-hmm. so I, you know it sounds like it's had a positive impact both internally and externally. Mm-hmm. You know you've you've been able to uh, you know take take the thoughts of many stakeholders, yes, formulate them and say well you know we have a you know call it a change issue or call it whatever you want, and then you were able to turn that into now a very positive, you know, and I bet I bet now when you when you go and visit, um, you know, each each of the residences, you know, I bet there's even more of a positive. Like now, people know who you are probably more than they did yesterday. Yes. Um, you know, it's easier to have conversations, whether they're easy conversations or difficult conversations. It, it makes it that much easier because now it's you know you've created that collaborative environment. Yeah, so, I would definitely say cool. that. Uh, I mean, I was approachable from day one with the uh, the town halls I did when I first started, but. Now when now when I show up, it's a people are expecting Alex Awards, right. but sometimes <laughs> sometimes when I show up, I'm not necessarily to, there to deliver an Alex Award. But uh, it Maybe. has certainly enhanced my ability to communicate with our workforce. Hold and, on, uh, let me go back to my car. <laughs> <laughs> <See> yeah, <laughs> and and really the challenge for me is there's so many people doing such good work across all of our facilities that. I wish I was able to give out more awards. Like it's, it's just, it's, it's almost not enough. So we are in year two, you know, like I mentioned, we are contemplating increasing the amount of awards that we're giving. Yeah. Okay. To address that. Yeah. So having that as an mm-hmm. internal challenge that you're seeing now that everyone is so motivated to move forward with this program and just be more involved, mm-hmm. um, have you thought about how this might impact your, you know, let's call it enrollment of those individuals with disabilities that you're helping right you have a thousand right now is that something that you're excited to look forward to that you maybe have thought about this might be um something that's coming down the pike yeah because of what's going so great and the word might get out there yeah i would say that you know we so we're serving uh you know just over a thousand individuals our capacity right now is limited but we also are always exploring new opportunities there are many towns in the area in the four counties that we operate that that are looking for ways to increase affordable housing. And of course, the um, 
the apartments that Spectrum for Living runs are affordable housing units for persons with disabilities. And so we, we do partner, we have partnered over the years, over the past 35 years, with many towns to increase their number of affordable housing units by opening up new group homes in their towns or apartment uh, complexes. So we are always looking to explore and develop uh, uh, new residences. But I would say, you know, the, the uh, our employee recognition program at this point is not really having an effect on that. Okay. Uh, but I, but it is something that we're we're hoping will impact that in the future. Mm-hmm. And have you looked at, you know, now that everyone is more involved and the morale has lifted, have you looked at those statistics on your turnover and seen, uh, you know, a fall off with that, that people are really being more involved and they want to stay now that they're becoming more engaged? I can't say that it has had a a significantly uh, impactful, um, you know, and significantly a significant impact on our uh, turnover. That turnover issue that we're having is a is a it's a result of a confluence of many different factors, but I would say in terms of making Spectrum uh, a nicer place to work, a more caring place to work of the people that continue with us that don't leave to make more money elsewhere, it has certainly had a positive effect in that area. That's wonderful. I think mm-hmm. when you when you have that in an organization, those are the people that you want to keep because they're here for the, their heart's in the right place, I think, when you yes. think about it and they're excited about the mission and how they can get more involved. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I guess, I guess with that, you know, mm-hmm. I'll end with this, you know, Spectrum makes a significant impact on the lives of, of many families. You know, you've been around and, ma- and many of your residents, I think the one thing I noticed about Spectrum is many of your residents have been living with, with Spectrum for, for years. Mm-hmm. You know, you have, you have a, a, a population of individuals that, um, you've cared for for a long period of time, and I think um, you know the public sees it, the families see it. Um, you know everyone everyone respects Spectrum, and you've done a great job to to really care for for many people's loved ones. And I guess mm-hmm. you know if if someone were to support you, what would that mm-hmm. look like? How can someone support Spectrum for a Living so you can keep doing your good work? Well, so there are a, a number of different avenues that we receive support. Of course, uh, philanthropic support is the most uh, helpful. For us, uh, we're, we're always Almighty looking Dollar to... does help. Yes, it does help. <laughs> but I would also say, you know, we have different avenues. We have a, a, a robust uh, volunteer program. Okay. We rely heavily on the support of volunteers to come in and volunteer with us. Uh, given our significant staffing uh, issues that we've had over the years... And uh, so volunteers have have been very helpful in bridging that gap sure. for us in terms of uh, providing that enriching life experience for our clients. So those those are, I think, two big areas that I think uh, people that want to give to Spectrum, how they have found um, an avenue to give to us. Say, hey, listen, if you want to volunteer, you know, not everybody has money. And I think Heather Heather raised on the generational um, question, you know, we're both millennials, so we get we get a rap for this, but you know, we may be more likely to volunteer than to give a dollar. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important for everyone to know that sometimes that helps agencies more than a dollar. Yes. Um, now, granted, you need dollars to survive and mm-hmm. we'll always take your money. But, mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> I, but I think it's important. And I think a lot of a lot of folks just who I run across, you know, even my family members and, you know, they know what we do. We work a lot with the nonprofit uh, community. It, I, I think people don't always realize that, that right. sometimes that volunteer effort is just as important, if not more important than the the donation so yes yeah most definitely yeah (laughs) awesome good stuff hey warriors thanks for tuning in on the next episode of civic warriors we'll talk with jonathan alston founder of four little souls about how a childhood charity took a few small steps and now impacts many young people in his community make sure to subscribe to civic warriors and thanks for all your support have a great day